I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to another installment of the Ex-Mormon Files. Thanks for watching and tonight I'm happy to, or today, whenever you're watching, I'm happy to introduce Mark who's uh, come to share his story of coming from Mormonism to Christianity. So, Mark, nice to have you here with us. Great to be here. Actually, your story is kind of a Christian to Mormon to Christian Christianity story, isn't it? Correct. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your family and your background. Where were, where were you born? And Born in Washington, a military brat originally, and then uh, ended up in... Uh, Washington State. Washington State. Okay. And then ended up in uh, Missouri for a while. Yeah. And eventually to Texas. Okay. Um, my family uh, never told me whether or not they believed in Christ or not. I assume they believed in some nothing, some form, but just wasn't talked about. Too wasn't much, wasn't talked about. Um, they they didn't weren't active in any church and uh, yeah. never talked about to me. Um, my my parents divorced when I was about five. Mm. So my mother raised me from about the age of five to until she was remarried about age of thirteen. Do you have any brothers and sisters, or? I have a, I have two brothers. Oh, okay. And uh, they weren't active or anything, or ever professing faith or anything either. Yeah. And um, about about uh, age eight, we had moved to the city and. Uh, Moved really close to an aunt of mine who was actually Seventh Day Adventist, but oh. very, very active in the church yeah. and in that church. And uh, she would uh, basically make us go to church. Go to church <laughs> on Saturdays. On Saturday, on they, Saturdays, that's their Sabbath, right? Correct. Yeah, which is the Sabbath actually. Correct. I guess. Yeah. And we would uh, from Friday night until Saturday night, we would have to do only stuff that was related to the Bible or something related to the church. Yeah weren't allowed to go out and play and those kind of things unless it was directly something <laughs> related to the church and yeah. uh, she really taught me in, during that time uh, taught me about Christ and uh, it was she's extremely important to me still today that uh -huh. um, I look at her as being the one that mentored me in Christ originally yeah. and uh, helped lead me to Christ. Well that's neat. You said something about being when you were age 10 or dear to me uh, and that was an important. It was very important. Uh, my aunt had taken me to a like a, a Christian type rally or a church type rally, and uh, yeah. it was out in the woods. Yeah. And uh, that was what they did kind of an altar call, or you know, if you want to oh, accept Christ as your perfect. savior, then yeah. then then come up front. And uh, I was just absolutely overwhelmed. Like the spirit absolutely grabbed me, and I, I still remember that that moment just really today just I cannot re cannot forget that moment you walk down uh, walk down the aisle and, and confess my faith in Christ oh, that's so amazing at 10 that's just uh, awesome so did you continue going to church with her from time to time uh, for the next few years until we moved to Texas okay about age 13 moved to Texas yeah. and uh, didn't have any Christian friends around me mm. not that there aren't a lot of Christians down sure. in Texas sure 
didn't have a lot of uh, Christian friends and uh, again my new stepfather and my mother weren't active in any church so hmm. um, it wasn't until I moved until we moved to the Dallas area when I was about 16 15 16 that uh, I started getting around Christian friends and uh, actually a Mormon friend who lived in my neighborhood hmm. And one week I'd go to the Christian, to the Baptist church. The oh, next really? week I'd go with the to other the friend LDS. to the LDS. Did you ever notice any differences, or did it seem? I I didn't. I mean, I mean, you're 16. 16. So, yeah, yeah, you're more interested in the basketball program <laughs> and the girls probably, but <laughs> and the girls <laughs> or something. But so, but you went to one week and one the next. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah. So then what? So uh, I I became closer to the to the Mormon friend than the uh, Christian friend, and oh. started going to church with him more often. And also, uh, he was also my ride to school. Became my ride to school. Okay. There in Dallas, they didn't have a seminary class at the high school. Okay. So on our way to school, six thirty in the morning, we had to go to seminary. Really? So, so you were attending? So seminary I attended with seminary oh just <laughs> for that ride. Yeah. And I still remember marking up my Book of Mormon I had the time with different colors and really? and, and going through that through that. So did you join the church at that point or He he had asked me when I was about uh, seventeen to if I wanted to be baptized. Yeah. It's typical to typical. follow through and ask if you do did you do it then? Well, I went to my parents, I had to have my parents' permission at seventeen to yeah, do it. Yeah. And my parents said no way. Oh, if you want to be baptized, you need to know more about the church and wait till you're 18, and then you can make the decision on your own. But we're not approving it. Okay. So, so you didn't get baptized. Didn't get then. baptized, and it wasn't maybe six months later that we actually moved to another part of town, hmm. and I didn't have access to that friend as much anymore. So <laughs> I stopped going to the LDS church, and uh, shortly after I went to college for a year and then uh, went to basic training for the Air Force. Oh, okay. Did you run into any LDS there? I mean, you uh, weren't LDS, or you weren't going uh, to church either, no, or doing wasn't, anything. Was, wasn't, wasn't doing anything. No. Uh, in basic training, they would have you go to uh, church on Sundays, or either that, or sit back and clean the dorm. Yeah, I remember that. Uh huh. So, so you went to actually, church. I went to church. <laughs> and an LDS church, or was it? It was a, a Protestant. Was it? Uh huh. I felt more comfortable with that, and. Uh, one Sunday they said, hey, we'll give you an option of either staying here and cleaning the dorm or we'll bus you downtown and they're have, having baptisms. Oh, dear. So once again I said, I, well, I will choose the baptism over cleaning a dorm. So you end up getting baptized in a Christian church. I did. Okay. First Baptist Church of San Antonio. Okay. And Interesting. It was a great experience. Yeah. Still, still remember it. Um, did you feel accepting Christ at this point? I mean, you'd already felt a 10 that you'd right. done this, so this is really the this first was, time you'd been baptized. This really, yeah, confirmation of oh. my, in my faith in Christ. Okay. I still wasn't walking and having the faith that I really should have yeah. with, with that uh, faith in Christ, but I definitely believe in Christ. Yeah. And shortly after uh, basic training, I went through all my training, I came back and got married. Okay. And, uh, we moved out to California, and while at California, we uh, ran into some friends who were members of uh, Navigators Ministry. Hmm. That's kind of a college and a military ministry. Okay, it's still going, is isn't it? It's still going. Still, still, still going. Navigator. Okay. Navigators. And as uh, we were very active, very active in that, loved the fellowship, loved the uh, getting in the Bible and memorizing verses, and and. Uh, uh, just learned a lot in that organization and and the the marriage was going along really well and then all of a sudden I decided to uh, kind of push away a little bit and uh, got trapped up in some worldly <laughs> things I shouldn't have got in trapped in and uh, mm -hmm. lost a marriage out of it oh, and uh, okay. kind of uh, walked away from church or Did anything like that for a number of, number of years a looking okay. back at you know at, at Age 20, you're not thinking right. You're yeah. just, especially when you're living in the world instead of living in Christ, you're not yeah. thinking and doing the things that you should be doing. So yeah. Yeah. then I wasn't even thinking or concerned about it. Yeah. 
it wasn't until I started maturing a little bit in my 30s that I finally realized <laughs> how much I needed Christ. And uh, yeah. So, but you ran into some more LDS people. More LDS. Everywhere I went, it seemed like I ran into LDS, and uh, eventually I ended up in Salt Lake City. Okay. And I uh, met a Mormon woman. Yeah. And uh, fell in love with her. And uh, looked past the religion thing and everything. And anyway, I, I kind of didn't have an issue with LDS being schooled in it for a while as, yeah. as in my youth. Seems like you've run into it a few times uh, throughout your life. Did you kind of see that as a sign from God that you were... I, I, absolutely. Did you? <laughs> that, that was my justification for coming into it again. Uh, yeah. I mean, why did God bring me to Salt Lake City? Uh, I actually was originally raised in a place called Richmond, Missouri, which is very important to the yeah. history of the church. Which and is back in Missouri. And yeah. the friends in high school and co-workers along the way. Yeah. And so now I'm an opportunity to marry a Mormon woman, and all, all I'm thinking is, God, this must be the true church. This must be what you want. <laughs> what you want, because you've, you've led me this my whole life. You've led me through this, so yeah. that's my justification. Wow. She wasn't active when we were first married, but her mother had a good influence to make sure that we started going to the LDS church and yeah. got involved. And she sent some missionaries to our house. I was going to ask well. you if you ever took the missionary lessons. Took the missionary lessons. Did you? And so after that, they baptized you, did they? And I, after about the first lesson, they were actually asking me if I wanted to oh, be baptized in the right? church or not. Yeah. Well, I said, Can you give me a few weeks, please? <laughs> Let me think this through or study it a little yeah, bit. It was kind of, kind of a big decision. Yeah. So you end up getting baptized. You end up getting and, baptized. And she become, she's active then? And we both became active. Oh, uh, shortly after, we had, our, we had a child together. Yeah. And uh, the church took us in immediately. The people were awesome. They got me into teaching a gospel <laughs> and doctrine class within my first year and gave wow. me the... The uh, out of the Aaronic into the uh, Melchizedek, Melchizedek priesthood, priesthood yeah. and so I thought I was doing really good. And sure. And were you preparing to go to the temple? I guess you hadn't been in the temple we, yet. We we were, and then uh, ran into some. My wife ran into some issues and ended up having to go through uh, hmm. a church court, and that was a very very trying time for her. Yeah, it, yeah. it hurt her a lot. Uh, the the guilt and the embarrassment of having to yeah. open your soul up to four men you don't know that <laughs> you know they're going to be talking to their wives and their wives going to be talking to the rest of the people mm -hmm. so a very embarrassing moment hope, for her hope not but yeah. uh, we're, anyway. we're human so <laughs> then we uh, had another situation where uh, we went in for tithing settlement one year and uh, we were struggling financially but we were always dedicated to giving tithing and the issue came up whether or not we were giving net or gross. Oh, okay. And we said, well, we're giving a net, we're giving everything we can, and the bishop wasn't satisfied with it. Kind of scolded us and said that we need to make up the difference and, and pay on gross. And that was a big, a big thing for both of us. We kind of just felt like, wait a minute, this is about Christ? Is this about money? Money or well, is it what's about love and, and rules and concern or rules? And so we be decided to become inactive yeah. for three or four years. We were inactive, I, I believe, and uh, then we moved out of that ward and moved into a new one. My daughter got to about the age of seven, and we decided, hey, it's um, mm -hmm. someone's going to have to baptize yeah, her soon because she was still going with her grandmother and uh, yeah. very interested in it. So I talked with the bishop there and decided to start going back to church there, and they just took us in. They were awesome people and just... Uh, made me the, uh, what was I, the Boy Scout troop leader and yeah. involved with the youth. And yeah. once again, I started feeling a little bit like I was on a pedestal instead of <laughs> focusing on Christ. I was focusing more on my own accomplishments or accomplishments something. Yeah. And making, making these people <clears throat> happy. Um, we got my daughter baptized and then decided it would be a good time to seal our marriage. Oh. And uh, went to the Jordan River Temple and got sealed. Okay. 
And it was probably about four months after that that my wife passed away from, oh, she did. from medical complications. Oh, that's too bad. That must have been tough, I mean, with especially where you... But you felt good that you had been sealed in the temple, of course. Was that... That, that was... I mean, that was encouraging, but at the same time... Uh, Probably during the last year or so of the marriage, I was um, probably spending a lot of time in the Bible and also uh, spending some time with a pastor named Charles Stanley, listening oh, to his messages. On TV and radio. Yeah, yeah. On, on, on the Internet quite a bit, listening to his messages. What did you think of that compared to the Mormon doctrine that you'd been learning, I guess, since you'd been I, I, baptized? To me... Being a convert, I always saw Christ as being the same person I learned that I came to accept and trust as in my youth. Yeah. So all through my Mormon years, I always saw Christ in that same manner. Did you really? I did. And you so, were able to reconcile that. I guess there, we really don't talk a lot about deep doctrine in the they, church they, they anyway. Don't, they I mean, don't. it's pretty rare. Priesthood meetings can get a little doctrinal, but really through sacrament meeting and even Sunday school isn't, surprisingly, isn't very heavy-duty doctrine, no. is it? No, I think one of, so the, you were, one of the biggest things that really caught me initially was uh, on the Trinity. Mm. I've, I've, I've believed all through my Mormon years of, in the Trinity, and I would hear difference in the church, and it, it confused me, but I just yeah. always, always just let it go. Yeah, because of Joseph Smith's uh, experience of at least uh, what he says about 1820 that he saw two people and did, had you ever heard of the different versions of the first vision when you were either I, studying? I, I, did, I did not know any of it. No, I, I knew very little of doctrine. I'd read no. the Book of Mormon one and a half times, <laughs> and uh, I wasn't too too sure. I thought there were great stories, but I didn't really yeah. gain much out of it. I I. I when I was in the Bibles, when I was really feeling like I was learning and, and understanding Christ better. Yeah. Well, one thing that I've realized more now coming out is that I think Joseph Smith had more of a Trinitarian belief in God, that there was just a one God. I mean, you look at the Book of Mormon even has all, um, is about one God. It's yes. not a multiple yes. gods, Very polytheistic. True. And some of the other things, the lectures of faith that he wrote, uh, uh, number five, for example, and some other things that are very Trinitarian in their concept of, uh, and he just changed over time. But you didn't know that as a Latter Day Saint, I guess, no, that did no. change that doctrine. And, yeah. But you always had that belief in in the one God and yes, in Jesus. So well, that's so that you conflicted. Then was that did that bother you, or you just kind of let it go? Just, and figured you'd just, understand just it. Just put it on the shelf. Yeah. You know, you get those questions. Say, just put it on the shelf if you don't understand. God yeah. will reveal it in, in time. Yeah. And uh, so after my wife passed away, um, I happened to meet a wonderful lady who's now my wife. Is that who um, we met a couple of weeks ago or so? Yes. 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 And uh, she was LDS, which is what I was looking for for myself and for my daughter. Yeah. And... Uh, just amazing lady and uh, we we dated for close to a year and uh, had a civil marriage yeah and uh, going into it uh, it was important to me that her and I went to the temple and and got and sta stayed so you got married in the temple or sealed in the <laughs> eventually temple. we we got sealed in the temple but we, wow. you know, like I say we had to it, it took a few years. I was still at the same time kind of confused on my Christian issues and uh, the, the little differences that I did see. But uh, after about two years of marriage, uh, her father had come down with leukemia. Oh, that's right. And I was close to him. I, I loved him. I respected him. And I thought it would be very important for him to see his daughter and, yeah, and, and me yeah, actually get sealed in the temple. That would mean a lot to him for sure. And so you did that. So we, we did that. We went uh, down to San Diego, which is where her father and mother were living. Okay. Had the family come down there, and uh, this is where my real uh, changing point occurred. What happened? Uh, I still love the San Diego Temple because the 
it was the point that uh, I think really led me over the edge to bring me to Christ and wow. uh, my my way out of the Mormon church. We went into the temple and uh, the temple president was actually the one that was doing the the ceremony. Wow, okay. And he sat down with uh, sat down with me and uh, my wife and said, so uh, brother, can I ask you a question? Do you have any any questions, any questions? before we actually go in and, and do the ceremony? And I looked at him and to the surprise of my wife, I actually said, well, I actually do have a question. Um, I don't understand this issue of having more than one wife forever. And right. he just said, well, brother, all I can say is just be be glad that you will have more than one woman forever, for eternity. Because you're sealed to now Cause two Because I, I was sealed to my second wife. Oh, my goodness. And it just absolutely blew me away. It was not the God of the Bible. It was nothing that I'd ever okay. could even imagine wow. that uh, how God would want it to be. And uh, I, I went back, and uh, I'd already been looking a little bit of uh, questions and trying to solve some things, but... This really put me on my journey to find out truth, wow. and I got deep into every bit of Mormon doctrine I could find. What year um, was this? When? How long this ago? Was this was around 2010. Well, that, uh -huh. That's about my time frame too. Yeah. yeah. So did you started studying. Did you start really now seeing the differences between massive differences? Mormonism all, and Christianity. The differences between their Jesus and our Jesus, the Christian Jesus, are twofold, absolutely, massively different. Um, the, the, the Jesus they, they profess is not the Jesus of the Bible. No. So. Um, and they don't know that. They don't understand that, do they? Eyes were blinded just like uh, my wife's eyes were blinded, my eyes were partially blinded, and uh, so many other people yeah, are just You had just a little blinded. head start on some of us, though, I think. Absolutely. Just having that uh, confidence in God. And yeah. my confidence was always in Joseph Smith and the right. church. That's where my confidence was. So what happens next? Uh, you went through the temple, of course, and right. got sealed and everything, and but you started studying. So... Were you uh, sharing any of this? With no, no. I was too afraid if I, if I shared it with her, it would just... Um, yeah. Possibly devastate our marriage. Yeah. I mean, a new, pretty new, new marriage, and yeah, that's tough. I, I kept it to myself as long as I could. It was um, there was a there was a church uh, near our house that I it was part of my running path. I would run by it all the time, and I felt so drawn to this church. I wanted to go in there so many times, just to <laughs> just to find Christ. I knew I was missing something in the LDS church. I was struggling just uh, really deep inside, yeah. and, and the more I learned about Mormonism, the more I wanted Christ. So, um, well, you you must have been in turmoil, though, not yes, sharing with yes. her, knowing you didn't want to be a hypocrite, of course, no. and yeah. So I, I finally I broke down one night and just told her, "Hey, I, I don't believe in the church anymore, and I believe in Jesus, and I want to live for Jesus." And uh, I said. There's no way I'm going back to the, the LDS church any longer. And I was surprised that she, had, she was verbally accepting. Yeah, she said she kind of took a little more relaxed attitude, but in the back of her mind, she kept thinking, I'm going to prove him wrong. Gonna prove me wrong, which I didn't know at the time. Yeah, and did she start doing that? Yes. And did you, she, you she started was, talking? She was doing so much studying herself. She was. I think she was doing more studying than me. Yeah. Um, there were two other experiences that the one was I, I finally walked into the Christian church one Sunday and they were so loving, so accepting and sent me to the coffee room. <laughs> they went in, the music was really good, so different. Words about Jesus. And everything was about Jesus and yeah. there was so much love in that church and the pastor got up and to hear the gospel mes message and to hear whole sermons about Christ and Everything was... I know it. It's just joyful. I knew there was no way I could ever go back to the Mormon church. Yeah. And uh, So did you eventually get to bring her to church? Eventually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. She, she, she realized the, the difference pretty quick, too. Yeah. 
And yeah. once your eyes are opened, it's just like, whoa, wh wh what have I been missing? How mm. did I, how did I miss all this? How well, did I miss all of it? Yeah. And the second experience was yeah, just by yeah. uh, um, meeting with a lady named Lynn Walder, and uh, I'd emailed her and didn't expect to get an email back, but the next day I had email saying that they were coming to town and I'd love to meet. Oh, isn't that My wonderful? wife and I, and uh, yeah. we met. and Lynn and Mike Wilder. Right. Yeah. Uh, had dinner with them in a, in a public restaurant. It was very busy. Yeah. And before we started to eat, I was ready to eat, and Michael was like, uh, we say prayer before we eat, if that's okay. And I'm just like looking around going, uh, this is weird. Yeah. This isn't something we're supposed to be doing, right? So you even held hands, right? He made us hel hold hands. Yeah. And very typical. now I felt very awkward, but once he started praying, I just wanted to cry. This was the Christ that I've been looking for for so long. Wow. And uh, I knew it immediately. Between uh, between that prayer and between the church and. Everything God was leading in my life, I knew absolutely that I wanted nothing else but Him. Hmm. And I wanted my children and everybody that I knew. I became vocal around everybody around started me. Started sharing. <laughs> started sharing my my, my oh. message and what I'd learned and what I wanted them to know. And uh, it wasn't uh, maybe six months after that, I jumped into a master's degree program in Christian studies. Really? Yeah. Wow, how has that been? I finished in about a year and a half. Oh, and, good for uh, you. Well, Mark, we're almost out of time, darn it. Um, uh, just when it's getting good. You uh, have anything you want to share to say to your family, friends? I, I just want my Mormon friends to know that there is so much more to be offered by Christ than what man can ever provide. Yeah. Bishops and... Not religion. And it's not religion. Yeah. It's about Christ. It's about that Bible. It's about the Holy Spirit. Is not about what man is telling you to do and what he's telling you to do for salvation. It is what yeah. Christ has given us. Yeah. That's so joyful. get in the Bible and read the Bible. Oh, and that free gift of grace. Grace is awesome. Yeah. And they just don't understand that Christians have values and are love, love God. Anyway, Mark, thanks so much for coming and sharing. And it's it's a joyful message, isn't it? It's the Absolutely. good news. Praise God. Yeah. And thanks for joining us tonight on the Ex Mormon Files. We'll see you here again. Good night.